Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain, and I'm here to uh, teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also encourage people who've been painting for a while to, to paint along with us. I think anybody can do this project. It's very easy, and uh, it's a good introduction to China painting for people who have never done it before. So um, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start by telling you the materials that you're going to need for the for the leaf project today. So this is our leaf tile. And I have on it, as you can see, some press and stick um, adhesive letters. And these letters are kind of proportionate to the size of the tile. Um, you'll need that. And you'll also need some leaves. I have uh, hydrangea leaves, which seem to work probably the best of all the leaves for this. You'll need fresh leaves that are pliable. Uh, this is my maple leaf. And then the other leaf I have is another maple leaf from my Japanese maple, which I think these work pretty well too. Um, I'm gonna show you um, how my, I already did a couple of pla uh, a plate and a tile, so you can see how they came out. Um, the tile that I did, um, on the first fire, it, it didn't come out quite as dark as I wanted, so I did add some color all the way around uh, on the second fire, and I'll tell you how you can do that. And then I also painted in the letters on it. So this is, this is one example that you can see. And I really like this other one. It's a plate that I did. And this plate, I left the letters white. And um, these are the leaves on it. And it turned out this, this is one fire for this plate. So I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. Colors are very vibrant. Um, the other cool thing I have that I can put on this plate is I have this handle, let me put it on and then I'll lift it up and show you. It's a little handle that attaches that you can use it, you know, for like, um, I don't know, cookies or something like that if you want to set it on your table. Oh, we're going to use a really huge brush. You're going to use a three quarter inch brush. And the reason for that is because you want to put the paint on the surface as quickly as you can. It needs to be somewhat oily not dripping oil, but it, it doesn't have to be quite as dry. You, you want to be able to work with it. So I would use the same process that you usually use, but in this case, we're going to start with the light colors first. Now, because you can see that this has the letters on it, when I remove these letters, they're going to be white underneath. So in these areas, what I want to do is use darker colors and keep the lighter colors to the outside. Another good thing to do is try to repeat each of your colors at least three times. So you're going to load your colors with a, a um, bright color load, not a thick color load, but you want your, your um, colors to be very bright. So you're going to take your paint and you're going to go into it. Let me show you here. I'll take my sunflower yellow off my palette and I'll put it on here. You can see that, I think. And I have my oil here. I've already loaded my brush with a little of oil. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle into that paint so that I'm getting a nice thick coat. Just wiggle into that paint really well. So I get a thick coat of the yellow. And then I'm going to paint it on my tile. Oops. And you just want to do a cross hatch. It doesn't need to be particularly smooth. You're going to do it in three places. Oops, sorry. I'm a little out of frame there. A little bigger piece than I'm used to working with. So you can see, I'm just adding these colors. And I'm wiggling, wiggling, then pulling it down. Okay. Now, if this isn't dark enough on this fire, you can always make it lighter. Now, you, I'm going to go into my orange, and I'm going to do my orange next, because that's probably my next color. And orange being a little bit darker, I think you can go up into the letters a little if you want. It'll be dark enough that when you take the letters off, and you need to really make sure that it's dark.
And you see, it's not it's not anything I'm doing that's really um, careful. I'm just slapping the paint on because what you want to do is get the paint dark. You want it dark, not the slight. You want it dark. Okay. Now I am going to clean my brush. Um, if you aren't using like colors, you need to thoroughly clean your brush. And the reason for that is you really want these colors to be vibrant. And in order to keep them vibrant, you're going to have to make sure that you have a clean brush to work with. So my next color I'm going to use is like a moss green. I chose that because it's a bright green. It's a bright color. And it'll stand out beautifully on this. Now we're painting a tile, and you all remember from painting a tile last week that the more you paint a tile, the harder it is to hold it. So you can paint right over those letters. And I'm going to paint everything but this lower corner. I think I'm going to paint the lower corner last so I can hold on to the, this. And this isn't dark enough up here. I'm going to go in and add more paint, make it darker. And if this color doesn't work, get a different green. I have an autumn green, and it's a real nice darker color that will help out in that area. Now, I do have some lines from the paint, and I am going to have to smooth those, but I'm going to do it after I get all the colors on. I'm going to, I have a technique for doing that, so don't panic if you think, oh my gosh, she's got these colors just like all different yucky on there. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush really, really well again. You want to press it till you don't see any color coming out, then put the oil on. And now I'm going to use, and you won't believe this color, I have a violet of iron, and I think it'll work just as well. Yeah, but the color is pretty similar. The red grape has a little more red in it. But these are kind of the fall colors, so this is what I'm doing. And because this is a darker color, I'm going to add it up, up by the letters. But I only go up to the color that's next to it. I don't go over the color that's next to it. Okay. But you don't want any white patches on here. These white patches will all be filled up eventually. I'm going to clean that brush again. I'm going to go into my oil and I'm going to get my brown. And this is the color I'm going to use over my letters. Not all of them, but some of them because it's a good dark color. Now, as you go over your letters, you want to make sure you go every direction so you don't see any white around those letters so that when you lift them, they're true letters. They're the true word. I'm going to put this brown over in here. Maybe some right in here. I'm going to move my hand down a little here so I can hold it. Okay, so far I'm, uh, I, I don't think there's anything here that would be difficult for a new beginner painter. Anybody, I would think from probably five or six on up, my granddaughter actually did one like this. It turned out beautiful. She put the word love on, and she did it in blues and greens, and it was just gorgeous. Okay, so now we're going to go through and smooth these colors. And in order for me to hold this, I am not painting this corner. I will add a little orange here, but I'm not going to paint the whole corner. Okay, all righty. Okay, so now you've seen what I, I'm doing. I'm going to take um, a slightly different brush. I have my, my number 12, which is, is the one I really like. Um, this one is from, uh, uh, it's a scarf brush, but it's a, a, a scarf china painting brush. And in order to smooth these colors, oops, we have a problem here. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I did get a little, when I was cleaning my brush, I got a little bit of turpentine on here and it's kind of affected some of the colors. So let me just blend those in real quick. All right. 
Okay, so we're going to take the scarf brush. We're going to load it with our lightest color, which was our yellow. And we're going to start smoothing. Now, the reason I'm using the yellow to smooth is because it's the least, li the least likely to mess up the other colors. And you're going to have to keep doing like you always do as you smooth things. You're going to have to keep patting your brush. And we're going to just smooth. And that's holding back at the very end of the brush and lightly, lightly adding your, um, your color. Now I'm going to have to add a little more color here because that there's a little white there. I don't want it to show. Okay. And as you go around, you're just going to smooth the color. And if you, if you are going from dark to light to smooth it, then take the dark and smooth it over the light. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're taking and we're smoothing and we're smoothing from the dark into the light or from the light into the dark. But you've got to be very careful because what you don't want to do is lose the integrity of your colors. You want them to be beautiful, bright colors. So I'm going to do it here. You can see how I did that. Here, let me bring it up a little. And then we're going to mix the light into the dark up here. Actually, it looks like the dark into the light kind of works better. And just smooth, just smooth. That's all you're doing is smoothing everything real easily. Okay, we're almost, almost there. So now I've smoothed everything. I'm going to lay the tile down here. Let's do some yellow over here. You can use egg, you can use, with this you can use any of your colors that you know are going to be nice and bright. So that's the whole point of allowing you to paint this, is just to let you use whatever colors you want. Okay, all righty. So now I have it all painted, as you can see. I'm going to take the leaves that I have, and they're fresh leaves. I'm just going to pick one, and I'm picking, this is the, um, the one I have from my hydrangea. And I'm laying it on here, and I'm starting at the base and working from the center out and just rubbing my hand along it. Both sides. Working from the center out. Here, can you see on this side? You put it down. And then you walk your fingers up. And keep doing it. I suppose you could try doing this with a brush, but I don't think you get the same kind of... You really need that pushing down. And I will show you what we have here. Cool, huh? So you're just going to do that with all of your leaves. I'm going to put this leaf up here and do the same thing. I'm going to start and hold the base and point, push out. But I'm not going to push all the way to the points unless I use maybe my brush or something because, see, I can do that. Because I, if I go out to those points with my finger, I'm going to smear the paint underneath. But start from the middle and work out. So you start from the middle and you work all the way to the tip. Okay, I'm going to take this one off. Oh, that one turned out fabulous. Okay, and I'm going to try a maple leaf. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with maple leaves, but we'll see. This one seems to be working pretty well in this tile. Um, and if you're afraid that you're not going to have a good result right away, um, then you might want to test it on another tile. So that's what I'm doing again. I'm holding it and I'm pulling here. Can you see? I'm pulling from the center out. Okay. 
And I'll put another leaf on down here, I think, like this. I'm going to pull, pull, pull. Can you see here? I'm pulling from the center out. Now, the leaves you put down, you put down face down. You might think, oh, you put them down from the leaf side, but you don't. Because if you put it down with the vein side down, I meant vein side, not leaf side, uh, for some reason it doesn't give you the same effect. So there, I've done that one over the yellow. And um, you can just keep doing as many or as few as you want. I'm going to turn this so you can see it a little better. And I'm doing it. Pulling it out. 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 And then taking, I can take my brush and just gently wipe each of the ends of those leaves on there. Lift it up. So you just keep doing this all the way around. Um, as many places as you can think of. Um, I think, now let me make a, a note here, where you have these beautiful edges on these leaves. I don't think you really want to um, destroy those. So I would probably go and just put like a leaf in the corner here and just do a little bit of a leaf, maybe not the whole leaf. See how that corner came out? I just did a little bit of a leaf. I set the leaf in the corner like this. Oh, this is actually a better spot up here. And I just pulled, 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 pulled. And see how you get the veining and everything? It's kind of cool. Now they aren't gonna look like perfect leaves. So don't, don't think that you're going to get a perfect leaf every time. You may want to just even do a portion of a leaf, like that, where all I did was I put down just the leaf along the side here. And I got a little bit of the leaf there. And the more prints you get on here, I think the better you'll like it. I'm going to do one more down here, and then I think I'm going to stop for a while. Don't. Press, press, like I just did over here, like this, where you're just pressing, pressing on the leaf like this. Don't put your finger down and press because you'll get little finger marks. You want to hold it and smooth. Hold the base and smooth it out. Hold the base and smooth it out, okay? And look at that one. There's a beauty. Okay. Now, for the moment of truth, once you get this far with it, it's a matter of taking off the letters that you did. Now, um, before you do that, look at your piece, and you can see how ours turned out. I think it turned out pretty well. But if you find that some of these leaf prints didn't turn out the way you want them to, let me show you something that I did on um, my plate that I showed you earlier. I take a number four brush, it's clean, it's dry, and I just go in and follow that leaf a little bit. Here, let me show you. Let me get up here so you can see. With these leaves, the ones that have like the fingers sticking out, you can't see there. There, can you see there? I do a little like that, and I might put a little top on it like that, and then I might come and do this side of it like this. And that gives me the look of a leaf, and then I can just brush it a little. And, they'll, and over here, kind of smeared, I can do the same thing. You can take a brush, and you can fake leaf it. So if they don't turn out exactly the way you want, fake it. Go back in and pull a little bit here and pull a little bit there just to get the kind of effect you want. Okay, this is what an X-Acto knife is. They have these changeable ends that come out. So, oh. alrighty, 
So we go underneath the letter and run along the side of the letter. Did you see what I did there? I went underneath this edge and ran along the side of it. And I'm slowly but surely lifting it up till you get a tab that's big enough for you to grab. Don't let it flip back down or it's gonna cause you a problem. And pull it up. Now, I tried to use these letters twice. I will tell you right now that using these letters twice is not a good idea. Um, they don't adhere as well the second time. You don't get as clean a letters the second time. And so you're going to want to um, only use them once. So now you see I have a little bit that's stuck there. And so what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto knife and gently run it underneath that edge until I have enough that I can grab and pull off. Same thing up here. Well, I'm running along the side. It's really simple. Pulling it up. You might have to hold the tile because the tile tends to move if you're working on it. And then pull it up this way. And then you're going to have to go back underneath. Loosen a little. And pull it up. Now, if you get a fingerprint on there like I just did, keep some Q-tips handy. I have a little fingerprint right here. I'm just going to take my Q-tips and rub over it. And that takes care of the problem. If you find a lot of bleed through, you can take your brush, clean it absolutely thoroughly, really, 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 really dry it, and lightly push the paint back to the edges. Let me show you that again. You would take it, dry it really well, and then just push the paint back to the edges. Push from the center back until you get it to where you want it. So that's another technique if you find that you have some bleed through. Okay, oops. Now on this plate when I did it, um, these came off really easy. They were not as adhered as this is because this is a, um, a heavier vinyl letter. But here we go. Last one. Woohoo! Okay. And now I just have to do the sides. Huh. I guess this is the better place to lift is in here. And you just keep lifting until you get it all off. And you're going to have to be careful. This is not something you let the kids do. This is something the adults need to do for them. And then, like I said, I've got a couple places here. So let me show you. On the F and the A, I've got some smudges. On the A, I can take this and just wipe the smudge away. Oops, no problem, that's a little dust, okay? Over here, I'm gonna do that, but if I do get into the edge at all, I can always just, here I've got one that's really, really tight, close to the edge. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take and move it over a little. Ah, guess I'm gonna have to use my Q-tip, okay. So, if I fire this, that's the way it's going to look. You can easily just put this on an easel and leave it out for the holidays. You can frame it. Um, I, or you can paint on something that's easy to hang like this. This was a little cheese board and it has a little hole at the top. It's easy to hang. Um, you can also paint it on a plate. And here, let me get you up here. You can paint it on a plate like this. And then that way you can use it right on your table and it's, it's always really handy. So that was our project for today. It's very easy to do. I hope that you do it with yourself and maybe encourage someone else to paint along with you. Even if you're a beginner, this is something you should have no problem with at all. 
you're going to fire it and then when it comes out of the kiln if you want to you can go back in and add color to the letters like i did on this one you can add some color to the letters if you don't like the way the letters look just plain white you can also if you have a couple of places where you have um, stuck your hand in it or stuck your finger in it or you just don't like the way it looks you could put a little color on it but if you get near the leaf prints one thing i will tell you is I would use like a yellow or a lighter color over the leaf prints. Then you're going to want to take your silk. Now, we haven't talked about silks. You can buy them. Secondhand stores are a good place to get them. Um, it, what they are is basically just like this. It's um, a scarf or something that's 100% silk. You just put your finger in it, or if you want to, like I do, I have a, um, a piece of cotton in here, and I rubber band it off. And then you can go back, and after you put the color on this part here, you know, like you put this orange in, maybe you color covered the leaf. The leaf print would have been fired in on your first fire. You're just going to take and tap it a little bit, and that will leave the color there, but it'll also bring out the leaf that's underneath. So that's, that's another option for a second fire. But if you put the paint on, dark enough, not thick, remember, but dark, you should have a, a very good, and I'm sure this tile will, will turn out very well. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope that you will watch future programs by liking and subscribing to my page. If you do subscribe, I would really appreciate it so that other people who have a similar interest will be able to see more of this kind of programming. I have studies available at my website along with products. If you're interested in finding out more about those, please look at the description box below. Thank you.